Hello and welcome to a Lens Studio overview video. In this new series, we'll be looking at how to use the Lens Studio platform to create a variety of augmented reality effects. Some of the tools, tips and tricks to create some fantastic filters. So what I've first done is I've just downloaded the Lens Studio application from the Lens Studio website and I've signed into my Snapchat account, so which would normally would be up here. So as you can see, I'm already signed in, so I could easily see any lenses I've published. At the time of creating this video, I have no published lenses. That's because I haven't really invested in the Snapchat platform as much as I have Instagram at this point in time. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to go through the interface, some of the sort of nuances of the application and just play about with it a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a new project just to sort of show you the interface. And by default, you should have your interface looking something like what you see on screen now. So I'm going to go through this from this side to this side. So over here we have our objects. So this is everything that's within our scene. So we have our camera, our lighting and our two light scenes. So again, this is very similar to how Spark AR new projects are set up. If I select any of these objects, I have the inspector panel will change to give me the options applicable for that object. So if I was to, for example, click the lighting, I could change the lighting intensity and direction, etc., etc. Next up is my resources window. So this is all the assets within my um, resource folder. So this would be anything I import into my project. So this is where I'd import my images, my 3D models, etc. And I'll be able to control them from this window here. The next little uh, option within the resources panel is this little material library. So if I click on that, this is a variety of materials that I provided for you. So you've got, for example, some twisting animation ones, some holographic effects, uh, wood uh, and cartoon effects already in there. So you don't necessarily need to create custom shaders. You've got some prefabs given to you. Uh, the next along we have is this little button here, which allows you to go to Giphy. So you can actually in, import GIFs into your effect, unlike Spark AR, where you have to use image sequences. So again, there's a few uh, additions and features that you can do only in Lens Studio that are not currently implemented in Spark at the time of recording this video. If we go to the next panel, we have our scene config. So this is where we can adjust our render order. So by default, our camera is always going to be the first priority for rendering because without the camera, the effect will obviously wouldn't work. Next up is our scene. So this it shows you where all our assets are placed within the 3D space. So you can see if I select my light here, uh, it's highlighted in white and I can see the inspector properties on this side. I can also use the move, rotate and scale tools at the top. So again, this is not too dissimilar to how Spark works or any other 3D modeling program. And I could also change between 2D and 3D scenes and what is shown or not shown layer wise. Uh, next window along is the script editor. So Lens Studio can take JavaScript and you can have again multiple scripts within your project. So if we had one in here, we'd be able to actually edit and type up the script in this window here. And if at any point any of these windows aren't applicable or viewable, you can always go to window, panels and bring that window up into view. Uh, next window along is our material editor. I've added that one myself and we'll look at that one in one of the templates as we go through some of the nuances of the program. Uh, next window along, we're going to go past the inspector because we've already seen that, but as you can see, we could always add components so we could add um, effects on top of it. So let's say we had our light, we could also add the sort of make that light look at an object or have a post render effect on, applied to it, so like vignetting or color correction. Uh, we have our wind preview window here, so we can change between a variety of photos or videos. Um, and as you can see, we have options for body tracking, so it can track head, shoulders and hands. And work, and using that, work out the entire skeletal rig. You can also track dogs and cats, and you can also track multiple images. So instead of having to use one image target, as you can then as the limit of Spark, you can actually have multiple images or objects tracked in 3D space with Lens Studio. You can also preview this at any time using your inbuilt webcam by clicking on the webcam button up at the top corner there. We can also toggle on whether the interface is shown one way or another. 
and change our device down at the bottom so we can preview what this would look like on different phones or models. This simulator window, as with most of these windows, can also be clicked and dragged and moved to be external. So if you had a second screen, you could have this on a second screen and use this preview window as a kind of bigger screen emulation of your effect. So if you was in a museum uh, environment and you wanted to have an AR effect but you didn't want to publish it to the wider community, you could have this set up as a sort of desktop view and just have this on a second screen because you can scale this window up ex uh, accordingly. We can also switch between the front and back camera by using the top toggle there. And I'm not going to go through this in great detail. I'm, like I said, I'm just wanting to, this is more of an overview video than a, a dedicated kind of uh, over explanation. Let's try and get this back into our panel if we can. Come on. Trying to do this with a touchpad, which probably isn't the best way of doing it. I'm just going to use my mouse. There we go. So I docked it back to my side. Uh, we can also import our own images. So you can always add new to import your own images or videos. And as you can see up here, we've got a constant live feed of how much our lens is currently taking for the size. So your size limit is four megabytes, which is the same as it is for Instagram or Facebook. Project info, if we bring that up, is where you'd add in your lens icon and your custom video, which is your preview video. Uh, as you can see, you've got details here of 320 by 320 or three, and maximum of three seconds for your video. This is where you give your lens your name, uh, whether it's enabled for front or back camera, and whether it's enabled for the spectacle glasses, which allows you to use depth actually as an AR element. You can also add a hint, which is an instruction that is shown at the beginning to tell the user what they need to do for the effect to work. Let's have a look at how some of these templates are created and deconstruct them and some of the cool windows and options that Lens Studio offers up to us. So I'm just going to start off with the schedule option. So as I kind of uh, hinted at, um, Lens Studio has more uh, options available to you from the beginning than Spark AR does or even Unity Vuforia. So one of these additional options is the ability to be able to track your head and hands and create this kind of skeletal rig. So if we look at this template that is provided within the program already, you've got this skeletal tracking controller and with each of these little image nodes attached. If I just expand the controller out, I have each of the, have these little nodes. Each of these sort of nodes are a tracked points. So I've got right shoulder, left shoulder, etc., etc. Uh, each of those then have attached this image, which has a texture defined to it. Now these textures I could overwrite by defining a texture here. However, it could default back. And what has actually been done for this project, which is actually an ingenious way of controlling things for future work, if you was to redeploy the same template over and over. It wouldn't make sense to have to go for each of these individually. You would want to create a controller. So we actually have a skeletal template controller already here. And what this does is it basically has a bit of script that takes into each of these nodes. So it looks for each of these node names and then allows us to adjust the size, properties, rotations, and the texture for each of those values. So for example, I could change the texture on my right hand Uh, let me just uh, resize that. There we go. So I could choose the hand, choose one of my textures in my project. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the head. And as you can see, I have the head now tracked to this hand. Uh, I can also preview this on myself. So if I activate the webcam and I sort of stand back, you can see it's building that rig up using those 2D images and it's tracking it as you'd expect, alongside giving you this kind of helpful guide of whether you're too close to the camera. So what's great about doing it this way is if you wanted to actually use this device or publish this uh, in a kind of gallery setting, uh, you wouldn't be limited to the user actually having to have a mobile phone or tablet in the space because this preview window can actually be uh, dragged to the external and put into a second monitor so we could actually run this emulation as the finished effect if you didn't want your effect to be published to the wider world. 
And like I said, there are very particular use cases where people would want to do that. But just to let you know that you can kind of do it this way and you can just change the uh, simulation to be desktop uh, uh, to achieve that. Okay. So um, that's how the Skeletal Rig is set up. Um, but you, like I said, uh, you can only work with 2D assets with the Skeletal Rig, so you can't attach 3D objects this way. You can attach 3D objects to just the head or just the hand, but we can't use this kind of method to track a whole body with 3D assets. It's just not some currently ap applied within this version of Lens Studio. So let's go to another template and deconstruct how uh, facial deformation or uh, distortion effects can be created in Lens Studio. And we'll again look at this in more depth when we do a dedicated video on creating a custom one from scratch. But for today, we're just looking at the pre-built templates to get an idea of what the windows are that we would be exploring in the future. So what I've done now is I've just opened up the distortion template uh, just to sort of go through some of the extra windows that you'll be encountering. So if we look at how this one was built, we actually have two effects applied. We have this face inset uh, applied, which is actually making the mouth larger than it really is by taking the mouth data and applying it on top of itself. So as you can see, I can kind of stretch that mouth out and make it even bigger. Uh, we also apply, there's also the face liquify being applied, which has these two points on here. And what this does is whenever you apply these kind of effects, it brings up this window, which is a 2D scene, which allows you to see the mesh and these points. So these points here are identified to each of these liquify points. So for example, I can make the eyes bigger. Uh, I can also adjust the intensity and values over in the properties inspector at the side. Uh, if I didn't want to remove a point, I could just right click on it and hit delete. Uh, or if I wanted to add more points, I can just add more points down at the bottom, like so. Uh, the face inset, I'll just, just look at that for a second. So this face inset here is just a little um, rectangle that's cutting part of the, the facial data. So in this case, it's selected to take the face the region of the mouth. So let's say I want to take the eye. So I'm going to take the right eye and I can move it to the middle of the head. I could scale this. And I can rotate it by clicking on one of the side handles and until I get the little rotate icon appears. I can also adjust how much of the radius is captured, so whether it's going to take more of the surrounding area or not, alongside the inner radius. Uh, I can also adjust the alpha of it and the blending mode. So there's various blending modes I could do to uh, change the... Uh, overall look of that um, captured region and how it's blended into our scene. If I wanted to, for example, create more, I could just simply select the face insert, add new, and scroll down to our face effects and face insert. I'm just going to drag this onto this one here. So I've got two in the same one because I don't need to have a second binding of that. So I could have a second face insert and I can basically uh, play about and create something quite creepy, quite easily. So again, this is something you can do in Spark, but with Spark it does require a bit more work in terms of the patch editor. With Lens Studio, we can just do it natively quite quickly. And I can also go back to my 3D scene, and as you can see, all this data is being applied using this standard face mesh model, which is again an average of the face according to Snapchat. And the deform is just stretching those polygons uh, to distort the mesh and the texture that's being captured live from the camera. So just going to look at one final template effect, which will introduce us to the idea of the material editor which is a fairly new addition to the Lens Studio platform. And then we will round up this video and talk about what we're going to be doing as part of this mini series. So now we have the material editor window open. So this is just a, um, another template that's given to you within the uh, Lens Studio program. And we're just going to be using this to quickly look at the material editor window. So what we've got here in this project is you've got this world object controller. 
So this is a plane which has all of our um, parented um, objects to it, so our 3D assets and the shadow data that's been captured and broadcast onto these models. And we'll look at how that to create that uh, in a dedicated video down the line. Um, but if we was to select one of these default materials, so let's say the uh, hologram, and I go to my material editor window, which I can get to via window panels material editor, we will be greeted with a window that looks something like this. And I'm just going to make sure this is actually set to the hologram, which it now is. So what we've got here is if anybody's used to Unreal uh, material generation or uh, Substance Painter, for example, it's a fairly node based system to take in information of values and um, texture data to then feed back into creating uh, the custom shader for that material. So again, we'll go through this in a lot more detail in dedicated videos rather than trying to uh, whistle stop through it in this video. But as you can see, you've got a preview of that effect down in the bottom corner of what it will look like and different uh, nodes will produce different results. You can add more nodes by right clicking and adding from a library. So if I just open this up, these are the values that is already provided to you. So this is a list of essentially Lens Studio's versions of like patches, for example. And by combining these together, you can create very various different effects. Uh, we'll be looking at the use of world space filters with as part of this series. We'll also be looking at target tracking because Lens Studio actually allows you to use more than one target as part of your effect. And at any point, we can always just take a picture of our snap code up here uh, using the Lens Studio application, clicking and holding on the uh, snap code, and then that publish that to our device for preview purposes. So like I've sort of said before, we don't need to have a separate program to preview this in. We can actually use the Snapchat application on our device and easily publish just by pressing the republish once the link to your phone has been made. So this video I'm hoping will just be, this uh, series, sorry, will just be covering Lens Studio. Uh, we're going to look at how to recreate some of the effects we've done in Spark AR. Also how to create some new effects that are only available on the Snapchat platform. Uh, hopefully um, we can go for this journey together. And if you like this video or the work that I do, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. Goodbye.